Hello React Native Developers, I hope you are well. Welcome, William here, coming to you from beautiful and wonderful and sunny Zurich, Switzerland. And today we're going to see if it can be done in React Native. Uh, well, we know it can be done in React Native, but uh, can it run on the M1 Mac? Yes, it can run on the M1 Mac, but how fast is it? Uh, is it much faster than the Intel Mac? Uh, and that's what we will find out uh, today. All right, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. Um, I'm just going to take this off. Ugh. If you haven't checked out William's channel, go check it out. He does some really incredible, amazing things with React Native. And if you're here, you're watching this video, you're probably a React Native fan. You might have heard of William. Or you might have not. If you have not, definitely check out his channel. I'll link to it down below. Anyway, today what we're doing on this channel is checking out the M1 MacBook Air and we're comparing it to the performance of the MacBook Pro with the Intel Core i9. And we're doing this with React Native. And yes, it can be done. Buy me a coffee. All right, here we are. I got the MacBook Pro 2019 with the Core i9 Intel processor. 64 gigs of RAM going up against the MacBook Air with the M1 chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and we're building a React Native Hello World application. Yeah, Hello World is all I got right now, but uh, maybe we'll do a deep dive and do a bigger project as well. But I believe Hello World is gonna be enough for us because the initial build still takes quite a bit of time. So let's get started. I'm gonna create a brand new project here. And I'm just going to follow the documentation. So anybody that's picking up React Native can also follow along with what I'm doing. NPX React Native, that's the CLI, and I'm executing it using NPX without a global installation of React Native. And I want to initialize a new project. Let's call it Awesome Project. Okay, same thing here on the MacBook Air. And let's see who finishes initializing a project first. That's going to be our first test. Should we do a time command on this one too? All right, let's do a time command on this one too. So I'm gonna add time to the beginning of that command just to see how long it takes. And yes, I know some of you folks in the comments are gonna say both of these machines are on the same network and therefore they're competing against resources. I have a gigabyte down speed here. Yeah, they might be competing against resources, but really they're gonna be taking up just a tiny bit of the bandwidth. Most of the stuff that's gonna happen on these machines is gonna be local to the machines. There's plenty of bandwidth to go around here. Ready? Let's go. All right, so we're downloading the template now. The initial execution looks like it was faster on the Air M1, but that also has to download React Native CLI through NPX. So it is using some network resources. And now we're installing CocoaPods on the M1, which says it may take a few minutes. Okay. Hey, it's done. What? What? The M1 is done already. Wow, that's pretty fast. This kind of difference cannot be just network utilization problems. Clearly the M1 has an advantage here, could be a faster SSD on it. I mean, this machine right here, the MacBook Pro is only a year old, so I don't know how much faster the new SSD can be, possibly. But as I've seen a few times before throughout my testing, IO operations on the new M1 are much, much faster. At least they seem to be. Anyway, let's head over to the project directory, which is awesome project. Same thing here. And now it's time to actually do our build. Okay, let's back up for a second. I did use the time command. I just wanted to see how long this took. Okay, so on the MacBook Pro, 54.77 seconds. On the MacBook Air, 36.91 seconds. Let's run the project. I'm gonna use NPX, React Native, and then run dash iOS. This command doesn't terminate. So using the time command here is not gonna work because the time command only works for those operations that terminate. So a good example probably would be a build command, but I wanna see right now just approximately how long this run iOS will be and when the application will start on the simulator. And this is all relative, of course. I am gonna press the enter key at the exact same time 
We're not gonna get down to the millisecond precision here, but I think the differences will be quite significant anyway, and it's gonna be visually apparent that this M1, in my opinion, is going to beat the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. And that's because of the native Xcode build process that takes place, is running on the native Apple architecture and therefore it's gonna be much faster anyway. If you haven't seen my videos talking about and showing different builds that I do on Xcode, comparing these two, then check those out. I'll link to those down below as well. All right, so we gotta set this one up as well. NPX React Native Ron-iOS. Ready? Bam, and they're off. Okay, wow, uh, the simulator popped up almost instantaneously on both of these, but it did start faster on the M1. All right, now we're building the app on each one of these. They look to be in the exact same place, as far as I can tell. Nothing visually is sticking out right now that one is beating the other one. In fact, maybe the MacBook Pro is winning by a little bit. I see more dots on the MacBook Pro. I do also hear the fans just kicked up. It might get a little hot in here. Okay, wow, this is a surprise to me. I was really expecting the M1 to pop that window up, that Metro window up first. But the MacBook Pro, wow. The MacBook Pro started the app first. Really surprising to me. I was not expecting that. And finally the M1 catches up. Folks, this is, uh, this is interesting. So React Native, at least in this particular test, in this instance, seems to work faster on the MacBook Pro with a Core i9 chip than the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip. You know what? I think this is worth doing one more time. I'm gonna terminate that process. You know what? I might be able to use the time command. It looks like it does launch and perhaps it terminates that uh, React Native process after it launches. So I might be able to time it to get a more accurate reading. All right, let me close down my Sims and terminate the processes on both of these. Let's quit that. All right, so the application is already built. This is gonna be the second run which means all it needs to do is pop up the simulator and load up the app in it, and that's it, which is gonna be much faster than the full build, but we're still gonna time it and take a look. So I wanna see NPX, React Native, run iOS again, and I'm gonna do the same thing here, just add a time command in front of it. Ready? One, two, three. What am I doing? I don't need to, I have the time command now. Anyway, ah, look at that. The sim came up much faster on the M1. And it built faster on the M1 and it launched the app faster just by a little bit. Okay, interesting. This is the result I was expecting, but also you have to consider the price differences between these machines, right? This one, the MacBook Pro being a almost $4,000 machine and this one being about $1,200. So the MacBook Pro is more than three times the price of the MacBook Air. The other differences between them in running React Native and building a project, not that large. Okay, let's take a look at the time command, the time output, I should say. Here we have 5.81 seconds on the MacBook Pro, 3.68 seconds on the M1. <laughs> we need a tiebreaker, don't we, folks? Let's terminate these processes. Let's close down our Sims. I'm going to back up and delete awesome project. Same thing here. Let's back up to where I create a new application. And this time I'm gonna call it awesome project two. Well, hey, at least it's not awesome project new. Okay, awesome project two. Let's do it. This is the step that takes a little bit of time. So we'll see how long this takes because I'm using the time command. I am still expecting the M1 to win at this step and at the next step. Not sure what happened that first time. <sighs> That's throwing me off a little bit. So it's these close differences that really make you wonder What's more worth your money, right? Okay, the M1 is done now. This one is still working. This one took 36 seconds, about the same amount that it did last time. And the MacBook Pro is also done at 49 seconds, more than 20% longer. Let's go into our directory, awesome project two, and we're gonna run our project in iOS. I have it all set up on both of these with the time command. The simulator is not running. Let's kick things off launching simulator popped up at the same time but the m1 simulator started up faster now we're building the number of dots are about the same uh, that's a tough one i don't know let's see ah 
the anticipation, you can feel it. There's that fan on the MacBook Pro. Good old trusty fan. Always useful to ruin a good recording. Okay, MacBook Pro is launching the Metro window. MacBook Air is right behind it. Right behind it. And there's the project. And they started up almost at the same time. MacBook Pro edging it out just a little bit. Let's take a look at the time numbers. Oh, that's interesting. The report from time says 17.99 seconds on the MacBook Pro, 13.07 on the MacBook M1. That did not feel like that. It felt like they were pretty neck and neck the whole time. So I'm not exactly sure what that time command is reporting or how it's measuring time. It's pretty, pretty close and I'd say <laughs> that if you were doing React Native development, you can probably get away with grabbing an M1, save yourself some noise, save yourself some heat, and save yourself some money. Thanks for watching this. I'd appreciate a thumbs up so other people can find this video useful. And if you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and do that. Hey, it's free. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.